how can you avoid trick questions from the Social Security judge in your Georgia Social Security Disability hearing? I'm Jonathan Ginsberg, and I'm a Social Security Disability attorney practicing in all Georgia hearing offices. Uh, and if I can be of assistance to you, please reach out to me. I'd love to help you. Um, when I talk about trick questions, I want you to understand very clearly that judges don't go into hearings, for the most part, thinking, how do I trick this poor fellow or this poor lady into giving me bad information so I can deny, deny them? I think most judges really do operate in good faith, and they want to give you a fair hearing. At the same time, judges are very, very alert to what I would call symptom exaggerating or uh, suggesting that you have a problem that is more severe than it really is. And I think that you can kind of very easily slide from kind of minor exaggeration into misrepresentation without really thinking about it because I think that a lot of times you're going to be nervous and you think I need to tell the judge what he or she wants to hear and then you find yourself saying things like you know I have level pain it's at a nine 24 hours a day uh, every day, seven days a week, uh, I can't barely function. I do nothing but lay in a recliner all day long, 24-7. And I've actually had judges say things like, well, if you're in that much pain, are you in that much pain today? Well, yes. Well, let's stop the hearing and let's call an ambulance for you. So again, judges just aren't going to buy that level of symptomology unless literally you're in a hospital bed at the hearing itself. So you got to be careful about really using kind of colloquial language to say, my pain is just at a really, really high, severe level. Um, and just want to be honest. Again, this is something you want to practice with your attorney about how to describe your level of pain or describe the problems you have functioning or what you can lift. You know, how much can you lift? I can't lift more than one pound. Well, if you're holding a purse or if you're holding a telephone, uh, that may be more than that. So again, you have to be real careful about telling the judge something to think that you're helping yourself when actually you're making yourself look less credible. I think the other thing is a good way to kind of prepare to avoid these trick questions is, uh, and again, sometimes the trick questions, when I call them trick questions or gotcha questions, will come in after the judge sort of becomes suspicious of, of you and, and how you're testifying. Go into the hearing with the idea that you hate the idea of being here. You don't want to be applying for disability. You'd much, much rather be working. It's much more rewarding to you socially and financially in terms of self-worth self as opposed to, judge, I know I'm disabled, pay me. And if somebody goes in and says, I know I'm disabled, um, they're going to tend to be more, uh, more dramatic in terms of how they describe the symptoms they have. So let's talk about what I mean by what I call trick questions. Um, and really understand that the judge is going to look at the record. And many times, you've probably heard this before, that a good attorney and a good judge, they're not going to ask you questions they don't know the answer to. So if a judge asks you a question um, that has a specific answer, and the answer is going to be in your medical record, don't misrepresent, don't lie. I'll give you an example of it. This happened to me a number of years ago, and it's, it's an example I always give. Judge says to my client, do you smoke? And my client says, nope, I stopped smoking about six months ago. The judge says, well, looking at the record here, uh, according to the doctor you saw three months ago, you're still smoking about five or six cigarettes a week. And the client, my client said, well, you know, I'm in the process of stopping smoking, but sometimes I still need to smoke a very little, but for my purposes, I think I really consider that I've quit. Well, there's a big difference between five cigarettes a week and quitting, because for obviously for many medical issues, even five cigarettes a week is not a good thing. And, but it, more importantly, it says to the judge, you're not being entirely truthful, um, because in this guy, this gentleman's case, um, he was just, he tended to speak in absolutes. I've quit uh, or I'm in the process of quitting as opposed to, you know, judge, my doctor told me to stop smoking. It's really, really hard. I got the, the, the gum. I went to hypnosis or whatever. And I've gotten myself down from a pack and a half a day to about five cigarettes a week. And I'm trying to get that lower. It's a fight, but I'm going to make that work. Judge is going to find that a lot more believable than somebody who says, I've quit, when in fact, you've not quit. Judge, another example, judge says, do you use marijuana or street drugs? And people are, you know, they're freaked out. Well, this is a federal administrative law judge. If I admit to smoking marijuana, they're going to come in and arrest me. 
That's not going to happen, first of all. And the judge just wants to know you're being truthful. So if you say, I don't smoke marijuana, I have not smoked in a year, but a blood test shows THC in your bloodstream from two months ago or six months ago, then you're not being entirely truthful. So again, the better way to answer would be, uh, Judge, I know that marijuana is not legal and I don't smoke it to get high, but when I have terrible, terrible pain, this is the one thing that lets me sleep. Um, I've used marijuana maybe uh, four or five times over the last six months, but I only use it when I'm out of my prescription medication and I have no other choice. And it's again, not something that I'd like to continue to do, but if I have no other choice, that's what I do. I think a judge would appreciate that and conclude that marijuana is not a contributing factor to your disability, but you're being truthful about it. And if it's consistent with what's, what's in the record, that's going to go along. Uh, go a long way. Another example, um, are you working? Well, you know, people think of, a, of, am I working? Am I working in a job? Well, that could be, are you volunteering someplace? Are you riding along with somebody? Are you doing anything to earn a little bit of money? Any kind of day jobs? I remember I had a case years ago where the judge says, are you working? And then my client said no. And then the record says that he was riding along with his son, who was a landscaper. And he would go along with his son every day on the truck to jobs, probably just to get out of the house. Well, he wasn't really working, but he was doing a little bookkeeping here and there. He might you know, take the rake and do a few things. And again, it was really pretty minor, but he basically said, absolutely, I'm not working. I'm at home all day. And when the judge says, well, the medical record says you go out with your son. Well, yeah, I do that, but that's not really working. Well, yeah, it is really working. It's something. It needs to be discussed. It needs to be, you need to be honest about it. So again, this is an example of somebody who was being, you know, in his mind, more or less truthful, but he was thinking in absolute terms, I'm not going eight hours a day, but I'm, I'm just hanging out with my son. But as far as the judge is concerned, he wasn't being entirely truthful. And so other testimony down the, down the line, how much can you lift? How long can you sit? How much can you carry? His testimony in that, uh, those areas would not be believed as well. Um, I think another thing that really goes to, uh, again, sometimes, again, in the trick question area would be if the judge says, you know, you listed when you file for benefits, you've got shoulder pain, you've got um, back pain, you've got neck pain, you have chronic headaches, and you've got heart palpitations. Are all those still a problem? Well, if one of them is not, tell the judge, you know, my shoulder pain really kind of resolved itself. I put ice on it, I didn't use it. I really don't have shoulder pain. Now, if I really went out and lifted a bunch of stuff, which I'm not doing, it might flare back up. But right now, that really isn't something to consider. That's a much better answer than say, oh yeah, all these problems, I can't do anything at all. And every part of my body is in terrible pain. Um, again, the judge is gonna find that to be an exaggeration. And especially if you're not treating for a particular problem anymore. So again, if you or sit talking about your shoulder pain, and you haven't been to the doctor about your shoulder for a year and a half, um, it's a bit of a trick question if the judge says, is your shoulder still hurting you? If it's really not, but you think, well, the judge just wants me to say everything hurts, um, that again would suggest you're not being entirely believable, you're not credible, and that the judge really can't rely on anything else you tell them. So I think the, the, the big takeaway here is that judges will ask questions to see how you answer, and they most of the time know what's in the record and what it is, uh, you know, in terms of your, uh, whether it's your drug use or your alcohol use or whether you're working, there's evidence to suggest those type of things. And so if they ask you a question and you tell, tell the judge something that's not entirely truthful, that basically means that you're not going to be believed for pretty much anything else. So I would tell you that uh, when the judge asks you a question, be entirely truthful. Um, practice with your attorney. You know, with my clients, I spend an hour, hour and a half, you know, weeks before the hearing going over that stuff, and I make sure that my client is entirely truthful because I look through the record as well, and I'll ask those same questions. You know, are you using marijuana? No. Well, it says right here you got THC in your bloodstream. What's the story? Well, so, you know, some. Yeah, so again, that's where I want to make sure that my client is being entirely truthful because. I want the judge to think that everything coming out of that person's mouth is entirely the truth, even if it's embarrassing, even if it's something that you think can get you in trouble. Um, I'd rather you be honest, because again, social security judges are not looking to put anybody in jail. They're not going to call the local police. It's a federal disability agency. They're not going to arrest you for anything. They don't have the power to do that. And they just want to know whether you're being truthful about your disability. So again, if you have questions, talk to your attorney about it. But the, the default position needs to be, be entirely truthful with the judge, with your attorney as well 
about all your symptoms and about the degree of impairment and whether you're even having impairment with those particular problems anymore. That will stand you in much better position uh, when you go to your disability hearing. I appreciate you taking the time to learn about social security disability with me here. Uh, if I can be of assistance to you, please reach out to me. If you're not represented and you're pursuing disability benefits, you can reach me directly at 770-393-4985 or by email, ginsburg at gmail.com or using the form on this website. So for now, this is Jonathan Ginsburg. I do wish you the best. Thanks a lot.